After a very intense game one, it's time for game number two. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching the playoffs of the EISL, which is powered by Coca Cola. Before having this event started, a huge shout out to our associate sponsors, Hero, our esports partners, Nordwin Gaming, our platform partners, PlayStation, and our digital collectibles partners, Terra Virtua, for making this event happen. Joining along with me, as always, is going to be Azim. And this is the matchup a lot of people were looking forward to. Mumbai City. FC going up against Chennai FC. What are your thoughts? Oh, it's going to be an absolute cracker. I mean, we already saw a great game with uh, Goa and SE East Bengal. I mean, these guys, uh, we, and it, we didn't particularly get the result that we expected. I yeah. mean, everyone thought SE East Bengal number one team would run away with it, but uh, clearly that's not the case. And uh, let's now look what uh, changes have happened with, of course, the the brackets. We do know that. Uh, FC Goa have made it into that upper bracket finale and will be joined by one out of Chennai and FC or Mumbai City FC. The winner will make it there. Of course, there's slight tweaks to the format, which is, uh, I think, the major change is the fact that uh, each game now, if it is a draw, it does go into extra time and potentially penalties. So there's no place to hide, no draws. It's a do or die for every single player out there. And yes, it's a double elimination as well. So every uh, every single team gets a second chance, even if they tend to mess up their first game. But uh, we've got to talk about the money, right? At the massive, massive prize pool of 78 lakh rupees, which has been divided as such. The first position getting 15 lakh rupees. Now we've got to talk about money because it is all about that and also the glory that will come along with it. We have a separate prize pool for the MVP. The race really getting very feisty and intense between Ankit, Naveen, and of course, Saranj getting 4 lakh rupees and that uh, Terra Virtua player card, of course, uh, designed exclusively for them as we're taking a look at our top four goal scorers. Ankit Gupta not really uh, being successful, not being able to score any goals. A perfect opportunity for Naveen and Saranj to catch up. All they've got to do is uh, score three goals and uh, we're game on back again. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be very, very interesting. And let's see now what the fixtures are for today. It's, uh, let's see, is it going to be, yes, it's going to be Naveen going up against Ashwin and Saranj up against Tikka. And Tikka, we do know that big game player, he's gone gone and taken down all the Goliaths of the EISL single-handedly. And uh, Naveen against Ashwin, two informed players right now, two players really at the top of their games. I think this is going to be an absolute cracker. I expect it to be a high-scoring game as well. And uh, yeah, potentially going into uh, 90 minutes and beyond. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, considering how Chennai and FC were playing yesterday and we could see uh, the old Saranj back into action, absolutely netting seven goals. But yeah, likewise, a lot of pundits will come and say it was uh, Mufu uh, not with the best of the players that, uh, you know, could potentially compete against Saranj's uh, playing 11. But uh, th this is the head-to-head -head statistic. Uh, both of these teams very consistent. They have been playing really amazing. But let's take a look at what happened when they went off against each other in uh, the league stages uh, of course uh, the first matchup was where Chennai and FC quite comfortably you know winning all uh, the games uh, just that draw coming in for Naveen but uh, eventually managed to seal it off in the co-op game but it sort of got a little bit better uh, the next time they faced off against each other we could see uh, Mumbai City FC snatching one point away and that was that win coming in in that co-op game however Today, this particular matchup, I think uh, every stat, everything goes out of the window because this is where pressure starts to kick in. And I think uh, one of the players who's really very well efficient to handle that is uh, Saranj Chen. And for Ashwin and Tikka, we've seen those little nervy days. Sometimes, you know, they've been questioning themselves before taking those shots. I think uh, just uh, yesterday on the day before, we could see those little bit of hiccups from their side. Really, really really hope that uh, they see uh, things through yeah absolutely i mean they could potentially have been sitting in uh, in that number one position right now and uh, well ashwin making a attractive duck face over there uh, but uh, yeah you can see very very closely matched uh, these players it's uh, 2020 up against 1975 naveen with a slight edge you would have to say is uh, is uh, ashwin uh, giving us yeah there you go there you go he's looking at the camera perfectly well done he knows where the camera is, the yeah, Russian. And loves he's, it. Uh, yeah, he's enjoying the pressure. He's thriving under it and uh, well, forcing a smile out of uh, Naveen as well. Naveen, of course, sitting pretty with 47 goals, sitting in third uh, place, tied with his teammate in those MVP stakes. He'll be hoping to add to his tally, of course. 
and uh, you never know with uh, Ashwin if he manages to score a lot of goals he could uh, find himself creeping up there as well because uh, Ankit Gupta I mean if uh, things don't go the way SC is going all want them to I mean Ankit Gupta could be out by the next match yeah I mean uh, Ashwin has got to pull off a play that uh, he did against Shubham right if you remember that absolute yeah. massacre of an evening i think we've got to see and all the mumbai city fc fans would be looking out for exactly that version of an uh, ashwin because he might uh, look uh, you know really bubbly really you know chirpy he's got that smile and everything but there is that ruthless killer instinct inside of him and when you've got a big player like tikka playing along with you you know he's been working so hard he's been so strong in the, that final third whenever he goes in for those shots but it's not going to be that easy as he because these two gentlemen in front of us saran chen one of the best players that india has ever produced uh, and navin who's always you know you could uh, arguably say has been sort of the player that uh, Chennai FC have always relied upon. I mean, uh, at uh, the very worst, he's been uh, called as trophy. There's no loose yeah. win over there. So I mean, that, that's still there. But th- th- today it cannot be trophy. Either it's a win or is it, it? It is going to be a loss. But uh, regardless, I think it's going to be a very interesting matchup. You know, Ashwin against uh, Naveen. You know, this is what everyone wants to see. This is what uh, we have all come in here for. And I think uh, if I ca- if my memory serves me right, uh, we have never in the past seen these two mammoths collide. So I'm pretty sure both of them have a few tricks up their sleeve. Of course, uh, you know Mumbai City FC is showing clear intentions of wanting to play against uh, FC Goa in the finals. But uh, for now, they've got a huge mountain to climb in the form of chennai nfc so in, in terms of personnel though in terms of formation uh, you know, tactically what are we expecting any pre thoughts as he well it depends on uh, what kind of players they are like some players tend to uh, prefer that narrow formation uh, and uh, try to be solid in the middle but of course that does limit you in terms of uh, how you can build using those those wide players you have to either force one of your uh, center forwards to go into a wide position or just build like v sharma does pretty much exclusively uh, through the middle of the park or uh, we have seen generally the chennai and fc boys go for that 424 formation or a 4231 formation we will see how it all pans out there we go we have the kick off it's officially on this is of course our second uh, semi final to decide who's going to be going into the upper and lower brackets fc goa are already there in that upper bracket and of course uh, will be joined by one of these two teams interesting to see the maldini back in there not going with a ruben diaz uh, is uh, is chennai nfc and uh, and navin potentially it could be the uh, the prime moments up- upgraded maldini if uh, if such a card does exist i I mean there's so many cards coming out every single day it's uh, often hard to keep track of them but yeah we do know there is that 99 rated uh, Pele available and uh, with Vieira so an interesting selection from Naveen over there going uh, with Vieira in midfield we have seen a lot of players go with Vieira in defense as well particularly early on during the group stages so pretty uh, pretty simple start from Naveen over here taking his time uh, we do see a maradona in there as well that 98 rated prime moments maradona uh, for it does look uh, well it does look like that was going to be a good pass but maradona there taking the throw in for mumbai city fc and potentially the maradona an upgrade or a replacement for messi uh, in that team for rashwin Oh I mean that that's going to be pretty interesting as to what he can use out of this card now this is one of those cards that he has not played a lot with right hasn't really got a lot to practice with and uh, making those uh, you know big changes taking those risks might uh, you know pay off or uh, might really hit him back in the face so we've got to see what really happens it's been a possession battle uh, going on between these two with Ashwin finding a little bit of a break maybe that's what he thought but with Maradona makes the right perfect steal but Marquinhos making sure that uh, he puts the ball out of harm's way as now chennai and fc are back with their attack yeah this has i mean this has a feel of almost a heavyweight boxing match at the moment oh, yeah. like both uh, teams just uh, taking it a little easy uh, but now and i've been trying to go up those gears trying to land that first blow it's not going to come over here ashwin defends that very very well and now will be looking to accelerate potentially and get the players in but now he's also got that upgraded zidane card in there uh, so no room for uh, kevin de bruyne or kante anymore and uh, 
pretty bold to to go with uh, Zidane and Hulit over there, uh, deciding not to go. Both players not favouring Angolo Kante over there. So clearly wanting to play on that front foot. And now with Hulit, will he go for that shot? He does go for it and hits the back of Maldini, who should have a concussion by now, based on that. But uh, of course, uh, well, players recover from injuries uh, miraculously in FIFA 22. And uh, it's uh, it, it, it's 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 showing that the, the contrast between the two players, where Ashwin trying to go that little bit more direct, trying to uh, inject a bit of pace, whereas uh, Naveen was trying to go easy. But now the mistake from Ashwin oh. uh, is not capitalized on, now, and uh, he lives to fight another day. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised, you know, Ashwin has let go of his KDB, right? Uh, because you know he's uh, been one of those cards that has always been, uh, you know, scoring goals for him. Uh, for, he's got that little bit of a long range uh, uh, shot going in. He's got up, uh, you know, various uh, kind of attacks uh, strategies. We've seen him go for those finesse. We've seen him score some really, really amazing goals out there. But uh, I think uh, both these players, I think uh, they're going pretty even against each other. Both of them trying to create those opportunities equally strong at their defenses. Few little slip ups. Uh, I, I, from uh, Ashwin just a couple of seconds ago, but uh, not a lot of harm done. Nothing done. In fact, uh, he managed to make sure that uh, that is all uh, you know Naveen could get with. But uh, for now, what uh, we've seen is uh, it's just a passing game going on. Both these players, you know, testing, looking for that uh, chink in their armor and uh, to try and capitalize. Now this could be a potentially good movement. Had Ronaldo Nazario got a, few, a bit of a space in between, could have gone for maybe a, direct, a long shot. But uh, now the attack, uh, that is back with uh, the Islanders. We've got to see if they can now uh, make anything out of this at all. Yeah, and also interesting to note, uh, just for viewers who are new, uh, Rude Hullet has not just had a haircut uh, randomly. This is, of course, the upgraded uh, Prime Moments Hullet, who has uh, slightly shorter hair now. And for those of you who uh, actually will just wait for... Uh, Ashwin to get over with his move over there. But for those of you who are wondering, of course, how icons work, uh, these are a lot of terms that we've been using, mid icons, base icons, prime icons. Of course, these are different variations of the cards that keep coming into the game as the game evolves. So it starts with base icons, then you can upgrade to a mid icon. And of course, as you keep upgrading those cards, uh, you can't upgrade the same card, but of course, you can trade in your old cards for upgrade cards uh, later on. And uh, those cards do make a difference, particularly to uh, to the meta. It does change things around. Now we're seeing less of those team of the year cards. Of course, the fullbacks. I don't think we're seeing Hakimi and Cancelo going anywhere anytime soon. But we see that upgraded Maldini. We see the upgraded Zidane, Hullet, uh, Ronaldo, Pele. Uh, all these, uh, shall we say, uh, enhanced players now with the even better shooting ability, uh, even better dribbling, even better probabilities of those uh, those low percent of shots going in. So it just makes for a little bit more exciting football, particularly when most of the new metal cards have been more defensive players. So it sort of balances the stakes now. Yeah, I think uh, we're kind of enjoying that. Even uh, we've seen uh, Van der Sar being upgraded, but uh, FC Goa, in fact, uh, V Sharma really opting for the, the not upgraded Van der Sar card. And he, he likes it that way, right? He's been lucky for that. Mm. And now this could be a potential good chance, mm. but offside signaled. And uh, we could have seen the deadlock being broken finally in uh, this game where uh, the Marina Machans are going up against the island is and uh, well it's it's been a very close KG affair as he both these players going end to end against each other you know beautifully making all those passes trying to build up those runs but I'm pretty sure the first that first goal uh, whoever is going to score it's going to be really an orthodox something that we generally do not see because that is the risk I believe at this particular point uh, both of them have to take to try and break through the other's defense yeah it does seem to me that Naveen is playing a little bit safe or a little bit safer than you would uh, expect to him to based on what we've seen from him in the past I think Ashwin is still going for it Ashwin seems the guy who's that little bit more confidence a little bit more appetite for taking risks over there he wants to uh, create those chances, create those shooting opportunities and uh, he's managed to create the better of the chances. We've not seen much action for uh, for either goalkeeper uh, at the moment right now. In fact, we can't even, I don't even recall who the goalkeepers are. We've barely seen them get a touch. Probably, I suspect, one of them will be a Van Sar in there. Ashwin's favourite. Um, I think Ashwin has had a love-hate relationship with Van Sar throughout the EISL. Sometimes he was just out there completely saving everything that Ashwin had to throw at him. And then once he brought him in, uh, he was doing the job and uh, making those saves for him. 
So getting back on the front foot here with uh, with Eusebio over there, Ronaldinho uh, brought on at the right wing. So Maradona is the debut lasting. Oh no, Maradona appears has to have been shifted onto the, the the left flank, and now a big opportunity again to get that shot away, not taken. So it does look like it's uh, it's Mbappe who has been sacrificed by by Ashwin, and uh, he wants to get that Ronaldinho card in because clearly. He sees a lot of benefit to it. Oh, we've got to see. I, I think a lot of players are opting for the Ronaldinho lately, and this could be a really potential oh, chance yeah. for Chennai oh. FC to try and get the goal, but uh, not today. Not today. I mean, uh, uh, nine out of ten times uh, we've seen Naveen scoring that one, but uh, this could have been a little bit dangerous. Could have been a sucker punch had uh, Ronaldinho, or rather uh, Ashwin, got himself in the right uh, position, had got over the ball but uh, regardless I think uh, both these players are so evenly contested you know at a certain point it's so difficult to break down who's playing a better FIFA this is something very different to what we saw in the previous encounter where we could see Afnan dominating most of his game against Ankit Gupta you know keeping a leash onto him and uh, this time both these players it's just uh, firecrackers all along but not really resonated not really replicated in terms of uh, the goals that have uh, we've been expecting but this could potentially change with Mbappe just pushing in through that right wing has to search for that right pass uh, can he get uh, Pele there yes he does find him but still uh, mm -hmm. the defenders coming in making uh, the right interception and now we are back to where we started yeah, it was a very, very good read over there from Ashwin to just make sure that player for the cutback was covered off. Didn't want to allow Naveen that pass and forced him to go outside and then forced the mistake. So, excellent defensive work there from Ashwin. We do know that he's a very tactically smart player. He sort of understands and can tell the weaknesses within a player's game. And there are very few in Naveen's game to exploit. So, he would really have need, uh, needed to do his homework going into this one. But yeah, 63 minutes on the clock. I mean, this has... Uh, all the makings of an extra time match unless one of the players uh, does try to go a little bit more aggressive considering there is extra time in it i yeah. think that likelihood that player, players will start to go on all out attack by even the 75th or the 80th minute uh, unless they're a goal a trailing or a goal down i mean i don't expect them to change the tactics at all yeah i think i completely agree with what you just said because uh, you know either ways even if it uh, if we do not see any convincing result uh, after the extra time also then it's a penalty shootout time and the way this uh, match is heading on i think that is exactly what we're in here for maybe a penalty shootout i mean bring it on it's it's be it, we've never seen one before in the eisl but no navin has different tensions all these guys break through and mm. there you go finally finally getting that break Casillas went for the save, but nothing could stop him. With Ronaldo, finds the success, and it's the Farina for chance getting that 1 0 lead. And this is where Mumbai City FC they've got to make those changes. Ashwin has got to think this through. He cannot afford to lose this one. Yeah, absolutely. And now he's going to be wondering. And now, as I said, now we will definitely see some kind of tactical changes coming from Ashwin now because he has to force the issue, he has to go out and really chase that victory. And uh, he, I'm sure maybe we'll see him reverting back to CR7 and Messi and Mbappe, the more familiar players, shall we say. And uh, it, uh, we'll be hoping that uh, he can give us a little bit more, a little bit more than 90 minutes and a little bit uh, more extra time. Okay, so right now, you know, uh, with the way things have been uh, going on, uh... It's going to be really interesting. 70 minutes have uh, gone in inside this game and uh, this is uh, exactly the kind of uh, time that uh, Chennai and FC had to find to score a goal. But uh, this is where you know Ashwin is going to be tested to his maximum potential. Uh, he's got to manage to find an equaliser somehow. At a certain point, I think this is where you've, you've got to you know, go in for an all-out attack, uh, get that ultra-attacking mode on and uh, give it all because at this point either ways you either score an equalizer or uh, you lose your individual game and there's nothing after this there's so much pressure building up and uh, Tikka going against Saranj it's going to be such a tough affair this is oh. perfectly the fine moment that uh, Ashwin was searching for but still maintaining that calmness and composure manages to pass it on to Witzbullet gives it back to Witzbullet a little bit back and forth uh, trying to 
trying to make sure that he's got every uh, every piece of that jigsaw right before he goes in with the shot. But th this is again, you know, looking at a, a past uh, version of Ashwin when you know he was a little bit, you know, uh, thoughtful before taking those shots. We did see that in. Uh, did, we did see that one little phase of Ashwin where you know he he just had the ball, he went for the shot, and everything seemed to have worked out for him. Could work out this time as well. With Maradona finds oh, the perfect yeah. break, and there you go, gets that equalizer at the 80th minute. And as he, we still do have a game in hand. Oh yeah, absolutely. Relying and trusting in his ability there to keep that possession and create the chance. Lovely individual stuff over there. Absolutely did for uh, Maldini over there. You have to say Maldini not having the greatest debut uh, in the EISL finals over here because absolutely destroyed in 1v1 battles uh, by both uh, teammates. So maybe we might see a switch back to Ruben Diaz uh, or uh, even potentially a Varan at some point. But it is... Dead level again, potential for a Terra Virtua super moment of the match right there. A lovely, lovely goal from Ashwin. Had an initial opportunity but just recycled and held on to the ball. But has he spent a bit too much time celebrating because he's hopelessly exposed now on the right flank this time. Marquinhos does the job and Ashwin now, will he show the bravery to go for that, uh, that goal? I wonder if he'll uh, keep holding on. He would have his attacking tactics set up right now. So, it wouldn't surprise me if he just keeps attacking and keeps going for goal, but he has to be wary of that counter-attack because Naveen is leaving plenty of bodies up the field. You can see those two strikers over there, Eusebio and R9, just waiting to pounce on any scraps that can be fed to them by the midfielders. But Ashwin, at this point, just determined to not lose that ball. He'll wait and wait and wait for that 89th minute mark. But Ashwin there, losing the ball, Naveen nipping in very quickly. And now Naveen has the momentum, Naveen has the opportunity to try and uh, get that uh, winning goal and I'm sure he'll go for it now. Will there be a run in behind? It's just one minute on the clock, this is it. Naveen has the opportunity, he sees the ball through to Mbappe. Big moment this in the match, potentially winning moment. Ashwin can't get that ball, it will still fall to R9 over here. Naveen past one, past two, no. but not past three. He wins the corner, Ashwin beats a sigh of relief, but the final chance yet to come. Oh yes, and there you go, Casillas making sure that he has it secured and the full time whistle blows ladies and gentlemen, we do have extra time coming out all for you guys, it has become a custom, you know, every opening match of uh, the first fixtures over here in the playoffs ending uh, out in uh, overtime, but this time we have a little bit of a different story both these players uh, scoring a goal each. So, that's something to uh, look uh, forward to. And this is where, you know, Naveen could use some Saranches uh, expertise, right? This is where we would want to see some Saranches coaching classes or maybe Saranj might uh, let uh, Naveen just do his thing. He might have given him a few little pointers to, you know, just make a few little tweaks here and there and uh, you're good to go. But, uh, wow, I mean, you've got to give it to the composure that has been displayed by Ashwin, right? Uh, when he was 1-0 down, that way it was all the world against him he still managed to find that uh, equalizer and here we are ladies and gentlemen uh, with the extra time the second extra time so far in the ISL let's see what outcome comes out of it a change there for Naveen it does look like he's got Cruyff on now to lead that attack instead of Pele uh, still uh, surprising oh, I do think we have uh, CR7 on the left flank for Naveen still yes we do so, potential for him to use that aerial ball in. And now with Cruyff getting the turn away past Marquinhos. Twisting, turning, Zidane not able to win that ball back. And, uh, well, gets that. You can see the recovery pace uh, that he offers you over there. So, really, that's the reason why uh, he's been uh, picked by one of these players over here. And, uh, well, just as I praise Zidane, he gives it away. Big, big moment here for Naveen. If he can capitalize on this, will he go for that chop back shot? No. Not yet. Maybe again. No, this time uh, Naveen uh, trying to just build on his own over here, trying to walk through the defence as he's done on a couple of occasions. And now Ashwin looking to play on those fast breaks, on those fast counter attacks. Obviously, the run tracked there very, very well by Naveen. And it's, it's really, really tight now as we reach 100 minutes on the clock, 5 minutes to go in this half of extra time. And uh, it's it's a really really nervy period. You you don't want to be the player who makes that uh, that telling mistake, that cheap giveaway in midfield. And uh, Ashwin will just take his time now again, try to see it out and get that last opportunity with Maradona on the ball now. 
having got that first goal, Ashwin uh, being quite tentative over here and just trying to see it out and get that last chance. But so many times we've seen fixes that players, when they try to do this, they just end up giving that ball away cheaply and getting hit on the counter attack. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, you know, your words might just turn true. Uh, but, uh, you know, I really liked uh, that little bit of a spell from uh, Ashwin where he was keeping a lot of possession, trying to get that perfect build up. But nothing much coming out of it. And this uh, the last attack uh, just heads on towards Chennai in FC as uh, Naveen would be looking to get a goal over here. But does not happen, does not happen. And there you have it uh, again that uh, whis uh, half time whistle being blown in the extra time. And uh, oh, it all comes down to the next 15 minutes of the time that we do have. Are we going to see a winner over here? I think uh, everyone's desperate. This is the right opportunity to ask all our viewers out there who do you think on earth is going to win this matchup? Is it going to be Ashwin or is it going to be Naveen? Let us know in the chat. Yeah, interesting to see or uh, try to find, figure out what uh, Tikka was mentioning to Ashwin over there because he mentioned uh, he was holding three fingers up at some point. Maybe telling Ashwin, you know what, just set up one formation as an emergency, three at the back formation uh, to go all out attack. If you, uh, you know, if you concede a goal and you don't have the opportunity to make that pause, uh, because of course players will run out of pauses as well at this rate with the number of uh, tactical changes that they may potentially have to make. So let's see how they approach this. It is Ashwin's ball, however, and uh, getting forward now with Eusebio has a Maradona next to him. And again, yeah, cheaply done over there. I think Naveen reading exactly what uh, what Ashwin had in mind over there. And just 10 minutes to go, folks. We could potentially be in for our first penalty shootout of the EISL. And uh, what a great uh, moment that would be unless Naveen or Ashwin can do something about it. See Pierre are getting forward now, Mbappe on that right flank. Potentially, there is the, the possibility that players might even at the late stage bring on, you know, just strong penalty takers off their bench. And we can see over here, Naveen with Cruyff getting past one, getting past two, getting oh, past three, no. but not past the keeper. Casillas with that save again. Ashwin just about surviving here, the momentum all with Naveen. Can he find another opportunity? It falls to R9. Now Hakimi, now CR7 in that box, fired into Cruyff, but Ashwin just about surviving another attack and a very risky oh. back pass, huge moment, huge mistake, what? saved off the line by Maldini, oh my goodness me, <laughs> oh my goodness me. Oh, I, I almost had a heart attack there, Naveen. Oh, Azim, I mean, I'm going to losing it. What on earth did we just witness? The goalkeeper getting beaten down. But Maldini, this time it were not his sexy legs, but the body on the line. Everything out here, ladies and gentlemen. It's an all-out war. And Ashwin clearly, clearly feeling the nerves, making those little mistakes. And Naveen... Oh my goodness, you've got to feel sorry for him. He's doing everything that he potentially could do. But uh, seems like, uh, you know, the gods above, the FIFA gods have a different story for him. And it's going to be such a shame if it goes down to penalty shootout and Naveen cannot see this through. You know what, I think Ashwin's going to take a shot here. It's open for him. No way! Ashwin wins it in the 121st minute after surviving the most incredible open goal. <laughs> oh my goodness me, what a turnaround. The cojones on Ashwin to make such a bold move. OMG, what a thriller of a match this was. It was splurting emotions. All along, Ashwin, he's got those balls of steel. I've got to tell you this, you know, how, what's the probability? I think he's done this in the past, you know, gone for shots like that with Rudolit. And even Naveen cannot do anything about it. Absolutely gutted, stunned, stupefied with what just happened right now. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. We signed in here for an interesting matchup, but it has gone beyond what we could possibly imagine. Ashwin getting that really, really amazing, ecstatic win against Naveen. It's 2 1. 
Off for the oh. cards. <laughs> oh my God. Well, and we're just one third of the way through over here. Uh, there's still uh, two more games to go. I mean, if Tikka manages to get the win against Saranj, uh, and the odds would be stacked against him doing that against the potentially the best player in the Southeast Asia region over here. So Saranj, the pressure is on. He's a player who has thrived under pressure for many, many years in the Indian uh, FIFA scene. And uh, wow, I cannot wait for us to get going in game two. Oh, the island is oh my god just getting that narrow victory i see but but now you know it's not game over right? it's still not game over because we do have saran chen and uh, he is mr reliable right he's mr dependable he's got all that experience it takes but going up against tikka who's one of uh, our favorite finishers in the isl we know how strong he gets once he's inside those boxes, uh, inside the box, and I'm pretty sure I think Saranjan would be having a certain uh, gameplay, certain idea of how to deal with Tikka. But it all comes down to this, right? How good is Tikka's defense going to be? Because yesterday Saranj was on absolute fire, but uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit later because the bubbly assassin who has striked in the last minute is here with us and let's just head in directly inside the studio oh ashwin i mean you're a player who loves uh, the camera he loves the attention did you do that on purpose <laughs> not not really it was uh, it was a very tough game to be honest uh, i think it's the most toughest game i've played in the league so far so and you know how uh good navin is so he actually he actually should have scored uh like uh, my auto defender maldini like somehow saved it and like luckily i i would say like i luckily got the second goal like correctly at the 120th minute yeah but what happened over there I, it looked like you were trying to i think maybe find the full back but the ball ended up going to the center back is that what happened it yeah 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 like if you can see i like i pressed it full power it went back to the cb I, like then it i couldn't react i like i was blocked so uh it was actually for the full back so that i can split the play and start uh building up again you know uh, talk me through to it you know that entire situation that was built up because you almost recover through a heart attack right at that point we all thought you know this game had gone for into chennai nfc's favor but that what was going on in your mind when you went with rude hullet uh, for that uh, long finish shot like uh, tell us about it no it was it was one of my positives which i would say because uh, if you see uh, the goal eusebio was through on goal uh, he was not marking eusebio also he was uh, straight running into the box if i had passed to eusebio like i could have scored but i went on with my instinct that is i usually take a lot of long shots and like i green it also to give it an additional boost and convert it into a goal today there was that that's the one that was missing i i i didn't hit even one long shot the entire game luckily got one chance like uh, tikka was also actually telling me like you haven't taken like take he's giving you space yeah. so i just it, i just went with my instincts yeah and the instinct serving you well 121st minute goal uh, so that's a first for us uh, in the eisl yeah. so congrats on the win still two tough matches to go potentially so all the best cheers, thank you so much guys have a great day cheers oh such a lovely man such a lovely man oh we are so fired up azim for this one right saranj now against tikka and i i think we did have this conversation right because we were looking forward to it uh, it had to be that decider goal had to be something out of the world and something out of the box and ashwin i think for a certain point uh, even he would agree that he was looking a little bit constricted like a little bit yeah. you know not in his natural element and tikka rightfully was uh, you know spotting that out you know you getting those areas where you could go for the long shot and boy oh boy what a time to take that gamble and watching yeah. it pay off because had it uh, not gotten through it would have been penalty and it could have been anybody's game yeah i mean it was such an even match that maybe i think the fairest way to decide it may have been through a penalty yeah. shootout because i don't think either player deserved to lose that game they were really really playing to the best of their ability and ashwin over there showing that composure a lot of players would have just said you know what i'll just uh, run down the clock i've had a big heart attack at the other end i just want to survive and see this out now and maybe a penalty shootout is the best outcome but no he showed that confidence got that ball in uh, down the sidelines and there of course found hullet and yeah he as he correctly said he had two options 
could have made uh, the pass but it eventually took the shot and gave us the drama of a long range finish shot but uh, you know these players have been on a fascinating long journey through the EISL and one of those guys who unfortunately suffered defeat today is Naveen and let's find out about his story in the EISL so far the first game because i was like not playing my best in the first game against hyderabad so i wanted to make sure i play my best game in the second game and it was a tough match for us because bangalore are a really good opponent so i wanted to play out my best game and whatever i could like my skills the pressing the passing everything and the skills i do in the box so everything came out well in that game and this could be lights out and it, yeah it is i think that's good night I think there is no way back for us over here. So I was able to easily control the game and get the result as well. A very new experience for me because this is the first time I'm coming outside Chennai and a tournament for such a long period in a bubble is very new for me but now coming here and getting to know them everyone is like it's a different feeling right like to meet others and get along some people may feel stressed but i feel like it's good only for me <laughs> because to be personally we play cricket and lot of things in the bubble we have small area and a lot of new friends so i like to spend time with others so it is a very good feeling for me the main thing that me and my partner i have learned is that we should not play with any pressure of fear because that is not letting us play our, our game the game play game style we play we feel the pressure we can't play the game you should play your like without any pressure play without any fear so that is basically it to be honest when before coming i thought it won't be this competitive actually because i thought like okay it will be easy because when i have played lot of tour international tournaments like e esl and uh, abroad tournaments but coming here and uh, it's equally very tough because each opponent you can't count any opponent easily you you never know what they come out on the day of the match so the the way they practice is different and the game they play on the match day is very different so it's a very competitive league uh. my game play is usually a slow build up the passing and if i keep the ball for a long time the opponent will obviously make a mistake so i'm counting i'll count on that mistake when he makes so that time i'll get forward and break the opponent a little element of chaos into their world and oh. there you go that's a great goal and that is trademark navin memorable match uh, might be against kerala fc because saranj has lost the first game and uh, it's a must win for me in my second game uh, and that could also oh, oh that's brilliant oh that's wow. beautiful and surely wow. the goal goes near post this time and just no answer to that how do you defend that that is genius from the way after the second leg we had to win the uh, 2v2 as well because 90% won't settle for a draw like we don't want that one point we want the three points so against kerala like the the co-op match we want 2-1 in the end so that was a very big win for us chennai and decide that they want to have the last attack or are they going to go for this uh, oh. Right now oh i am not it's in it's saranj with that brilliant individual genius over there Yes, Saranj is a very good player, and uh, he's got a lot of experience playing uh, tournaments outside. And he has helped me a lot uh, in the game. In, like the way he presses, like I got inspired by the way he presses a lot. So that helped me a lot to improve my game as well. The chemistry with Saranj is very well because we practice uh, in the start, but then most of the times we don't practice. We just go to the match directly. But our communication is strong, and that helps us a lot in defensive and offensively. Like we know when to make a run, when to pass. So that helps us a lot. It's 
lot of messages come from me in the Insta to Saranch as well. That's the support they show us is incredible. After the game, we'll go and check the comments. It's like so good to see the fans supporting us. Even after a four game, we were without a win. Even during that time, they supported us a lot. They were like keep on telling you, you guys are the best. So that that helps us a lot and keep supporting us because I think we are not in our best game yet. And in the next coming games, uh, seven games are there. We'll be back to our best and we'll get the cup for this one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope you've caught your popcorns along because this is going to be one hell of a matchup. It is Saranj Jain against Karman Tikka, Chennai FC going up against Mumbai City FC, the second matchup of this fixture. And uh, this is the last individual matchup we have for this evening. And now it's against all odds. Saranj Jain has to pull out a magic uh, uh, has to pull out a rabbit of his magic hat or something or the other has to push this game to a core because Chennai and FC I don't think uh, the fans would also settle with the loss over here yeah and of course Tikka will be quite motivated to get the win because uh, he's still in that discussion to get uh, that MVP spot if he manages to somehow go and uh, absolutely smash Saraj today could get his tally up to uh, that uh, 50, 50 mark uh, pretty soon. And with Ankit Gupta not showing the best of form, Tikka, you would have to say, still in with a chance of uh, taking that uh, 4 lakh prize and, of course, that personalized NFT from Terra Virtua. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think um, they do all stand. And, and for now, you know, um, Suraj Jain, even for his personal accolades, uh, if he can manage to at least uh, get, uh, let's say, three or four goals in this one now you're gonna be looking at toppling over Ankit Gupta what we really uh, felt had uh, was a golden chance but likewise you know even in this uh, little video we had Naveen explaining that he likes to make those slow build-ups but uh, today uh, I don't think we could see any uh, huge mistakes from his side clearly just being a little unlucky with all those attempts uh, being made by the players but uh, for now let's see what uh, fate has for these uh, Two gentlemen in front of our screen, Saran Shen, proclaimed as the best player of South Asia, has represented the country on various occasions, got laurels as well against a hungry Carmen Tikka who's had a roller coaster of a journey in the ISL. And here we go, game on. It's uh, the Machans going up against the Islanders. Let's see who wins this one out. Yep, it is. Uh, just, I think Saran will just take it a little easier. The beginning just uh, get his bearings right or I don't know if he's going to try to go absolutely for broke because whenever we've seen Tikka from get the first possession he just immediately takes that full back, full back and absolutely starts bursting up the pitch really puts you on the back foot so Saraj would have been uh, happy to have that first possession and that momentum to himself now getting in with uh, Mbappe at the edge of the area let's see what he can do Tikka nipping in there very nicely winning that ball back and now What's he got? Of course, uh, if you are new to the EISL, Tikka, one of the best finishers in the game. Put him in a 1v1 situation with three different, even three, three v1 uh, sometimes. Uh, and he'll just sum to, to beat all of them. But this time, Saraj to beat all of them. But this time, Saraj trying to get in. Well defended by Tikka, of course, using that team of the year. Joao Cancelo back in there and will look now to uh, start building Cruyff in from the start along with Zidane so it does look like it is a 4-2-3-1 formation from Tikka potentially a mark of respect to Saranj because 4-2-3-1 genuinely is the formation that uh, you would play when you're looking to be more defensively solid those wide players like we see over here with uh, Pele and uh, the Mbappe on that right flank uh, will be helping and tracking back and we've already seen some moments of that Pele nipping back in there to uh, rob the ball off uh, the right winger for Saranj. Saranj going with uh, CR7 and that left flank over there, Eusebio over there as well. And of course, uh, R9 uh, available to him. So, uh, going to be a very, very close encounter. The advantage is with uh, Mumbai City FC right now. Ashwin with that last minute, last second goal almost uh, to get the win. 
and now Saraj needs that win for his team to keep Mumbai uh, to keep uh, Chennai in uh, FC still alive. Yeah. You know, one of those uh, signature abilities uh, or tendencies you could say we've seen from Tikka's side is uh, how he loves to get inside the box with just that one player and dribbles past. I think this is one of those things that uh, you know, Saranj uh, acknowledges and he must be having uh, something or the other at the back of his mind to deal with it, right? Uh, but on the contrary, if you talk about Saranj, we did see him making those exceptionally good uh, ball flicks yesterday, you know, just uh, trying to make that shot fake sometimes and then scoring, destroying with uh, the goalkeeper of the opposition. So that is again something that Tikka has to deal with. I like uh, always, I think Azim, you had uh, clearly said it out. You know, you've got to wait for the perfect opportunity. Uh, do not have, uh, you need not have your goalkeeper taking that plunge early on. You know he's going to try and do that. I think that is something that uh, Tikka would be looking out for right now. But Saran Chen getting in through that right wing with Mbappe is going to search for the right man pass. Gives it on to Bits Hullet. And uh, on now with Eusebio. He's trying to get in. Marquinhos coming out with the rescue. Out goes out for a corner. Yep, as you rightly said. And I think considering the evidence that we've seen with um, the keepers pulling out so many of these clutch saves uh, in both the matches we've seen so far. It's probably worth letting the keeper just uh, well, as that is going to go out for a goal kick. But it's probably worth letting the keeper just make the save, do his thing, uh, and rather than bringing them out and uh, because you know that's sort of playing into Saranch's hands. If he does get that one v one situation, he is just so deadly. He'd use that ball roll, that shot cancel, make the keeper look like an absolute fool. And uh, now Tikka trying to get in uh, behind, being uh, fairly patient, fairly cautious, and we have seen. Uh, two versions of Tikka in this tournament. Sometimes we've seen that that the big game Tikka that we're seeing today, where he's very determined, very solid at the back, not taking too many unnecessary risks, playing it safe. But when he gets that opportunity, when he gets into the box, suddenly starts to come to life and then finds those little areas you can see over there with Cruyff trying to get in between two defenders and take that shot. Didn't work for him that time. Saranj, well aware, using that second man press well to shut down the shooting lane. Yeah, uh, and uh, now it's uh, Saranj again. So 31 minutes, games have ebbed, ebbed and flowed quite nicely over here. No great pointers, no great uh, dominator or dominating dominating force at the moment over here. But this time, big opportunity for Saranj. Gets that ball into Mbappe, but Tikka hanging oh. on in there, sees it out and keeps that scoreline at nil nil. Yeah, I think at this particular point, you know, Saranj would be a little bit. Uh, no, sad about the fact that uh, maybe he had a chance to go for it, uh, pass too many and not really working out uh, the way he wanted to. But again, managed to retain possession. So that, that's uh, good for starters. With CR7, would want to close in from that left wing, passes it on with Eusebio, with Vieira, with Hullet, just keeps it away. And these little uh, cheeky miss passes, right, uh, could cost heavy. And this could again be one of those games where we're talking about, you know, uh, someone. You know, doing something out of the box, out of the ordinary, something that they have not done before. Because now in this particular matchup, we're not seeing players making a lot of errors, right? So, uh, both of them know exactly what's uh, going to come their way. But uh, Tikka may be uh, trying to take that aerial route, but not receiving any success over there. Yeah, we've seen Saranj trying to get that ball in behind repeatedly. This time it's worked for him. And now, this is the situation where Saranj can be so deadly. But Tikka again... Getting those players back, getting those defenders involved nice and early with the Marseille Roule with CR7, but again, well defended by Tikka. He's not uh, giving Saranj much opportunity. Again, playing it safe over there, making those right options, and now will look to get in behind, but will just get the throw and potentially that last attack of the first half. Now it comes to Zidane in the middle of the park. We haven't seen much in terms of uh, clear cut opportunities. I think maybe Saranj could say he's come. Closest to having a, a good shot on goal, Tikka had maybe one half half chance uh, with uh, with Cruyff. But as we were expecting, I think a very very even, a very very nervy game. Of course, Tikka cannot afford to play for a draw because then it comes out to the lottery of a penalty shootout. But uh, yeah, it's Saranj. He's the big game player. He's the guy who's uh, been there, done that, seen it all. And if there's anybody equipped to deal with the situation, it is him. 
Yeah, uh, and uh, I th- uh, rightfully said, right, uh, because he's been even uh, in more intense situations than this and he's managed to pull off a victory. But lately, you know, his entire stint in EISL hasn't really been as glorious as his other tournaments, right? We have seen those little sparks of that ruthless runs sometimes in uh, between, you know, a few games where he absolutely goes big, you know, bombarding six to seven goals a game. But now here he's struggling. To find an opening against a very formidable ticker who's uh, you know who's been uh, ever determined ever focused now maybe things might change in the second half maybe a few fresh legs might be bought up after that uh, 60 minute marker heads out uh, but no instead of uh, that they've instantly opted for a substitution Messi being uh, brought up for uh, the Marina Machans we've got to see if they can uh, make anything out of it are we looking for that uh, chop back finesse shot uh, Zeeb uh, well, it looks like it's Hakimi in the box over there. Really not the player that uh, Saranj wanted to see in that moment. He would have loved for it to be CR7 or Messi there. And now, Tikka going up the gears, increasing that pace, saw the opportunity to feed that ball in. But of course, Mbappe was offside by the time he could get it to him. And now, it is Pele over here with Zidane. Ball in the behind. This time, a great ball for Tikka to try and create something. Using those uh, those short fakes, those scoop turns to try to create space. Gets the space this time. Turns away from one and two. No! And the roulette and into the top corner. That's what you mean when you say Tikka is the best finisher in this game. 1-0 to Mumbai City FC. Some Tikka magic was definitely needed over here. And the Islanders exactly finding it through. Look at him go. The Mars Rulé coming in. Just beating the defender out there. Saranj absolutely stunned. And the new Ronaldo card really working out. Being the answer. But no time to lament over this goal. He has to strike back. Saranj has to do it against all odds. But... Garman Tikka, if he can find one more, then uh, that could potentially be lights out. But uh, Azim, what do you think? What is needed from Saranch at this moment? Well, uh, Saranch, I think I'm sure he has another couple of girls that he can go up uh, and try to go searching for that win. It's going to make that uh, more and more difficult for Tikka, who has already set up pretty solidly on his defence. And uh, what you should be setting up is your plans for the... Hero ISL semi-final, second leg between ATK MB and Hyderabad FC. Hyderabad FC, of course, with a 3-1 lead going into that second leg, but it all could change in the space of 90 minutes for them. But getting in over here was Tikka, but well defended by Saranj. And now he'll be looking to get in behind. Can he play that ball early to Mbappe? Nope, he's already gone offside. And Saranj forced to start building from midfield again. But yeah, these are nervy moments for Saranj. Not a situation that... Uh, uh, he's accustomed to being in this season. Chennai and FC always been easily in that top four throughout. And now, Saranj, with the big opportunity, trying to bait Tikka into making the tackle. But Tikka standing firm. Now the cheap giveaway. This could be the moment that Saranj has been looking for. He started to turn the screw now. But again, Tikka, you can see the number of bodies back there. Now with Mbappe and the scoop oh. turn. And again, the defender in the way. And now the counter-attack for Tikka. Make it two, potentially, if he can play this right. You know, at this point, you know, I'm going to ask you this. Uh, should Sharanj go for those long-range shots? Because, you know, he's been trying to get into the box. He's been uh, trying to make those passes in the final third. But uh, it's clearly not working out. And now, if uh, plan A does not uh, go along well, what's plan B for Sharanj? Well, you know, I think for, uh, shall we say, a lot of the old-school players uh, in, in the in the scene, like your Saranj, like your Lokmanios, like uh, even uh, the guys like uh, V Sharma, for instance, or Shubham. Uh, these are the guys who, uh, I mean, for them, those those finesse shots, those long-range shots have never really been part of the match. Oh my goodness! Almost another snapshot over there. And again, Saranj back against the ropes over here with the corner kick from Tikka. Does he have an ace up his sleeve? He just goes with the short corner over here. Lays it out to Cruyff. Will go back to Pele. I think he was trying to queue up that uh, long range shot. Will go with Hullet. Chips it in towards Cruyff. Who is on side. <laughs> and it is 2-0. Out of nowhere. Another beautiful ball in from Tikka. And how does Saranj come back from here? No way. No way. This is Tikka magic for you guys out here. And... This is this is what it takes, you know, to score against a juggernaut like Saranj. And you've got to make those right trick moves, those right passes, everything picture perfect. And 
Dekka making sure when it all matters, he steps up to the occasion. Mumbai City FC fans are going to be so elated watching their star player go all out. But from here onwards, I mean, at this particular point, Azim, had it been a 1-0 lead for uh, MCFC, uh, Chennai and FC, I could have still said they're in potential, uh, uh, there's a potential chance that they could uh, make a comeback. But from here onwards, uh, it's looking so flimsy. Maybe a third one could be the final nail in the coffin. And Dekka is looking at exactly trying to do that. Oh yeah, Tikka, he's in a massive flow right now. Just look at him go, just like absolutely cutting through the defence over there. This time, allowing Saranj to get back. He's like, you know what, it's too easy to just hit you on the counter-attack. You come back, get your defence set, and then I'll score against all your defenders. That's the kind of mood Tikka is in. Look at him go! Oh. Deflected wide for a corner. This is the best player in Southeast Asia we're talking about, and he is absolutely backs against the wall, Saranj, right now, and making... A few last-ditch changes. He has to go all-out attack. There's no choice. Oh, yeah. There is no choice on earth right now. He's got to go all to attacking. But he's got to find that one break at least. He's got to find that one goal before he starts thinking of something else. Because anything and everything that he's put on the table hasn't clearly worked out. But for Mumbai City FC, they've got their work cut out. They know all they've got to do is defend at this particular moment. Ensure that uh, they do not concede any goals. That is it. That is going to make sure that they're heading into the upper bracket finals to go up against FC Goa. Well, both these uh, both these teams decided, you know, they wanted to face off against each other in the grand finals and uh, they are uh, facing uh, just a little bit ahead. And I'm really loving how Garmin Tikka had been, uh, has been retaining possession, right? His build-ups, everything absolutely perfect. Just what you would expect from him. Yeah, he's, uh, he's really pulled a rabbit out of the hat here today. And again, you can see he's got Maradona on and just toying with Saranch's defence. Will he go for a long-range shot over here? And decides that, uh, no, he's going to do it uh, the hard way. Opens up again with Hullet. He's toying with Saranj here. He's like, come on, get the ball off me. It's okay. I'm not scary. I won't bite. And then suddenly, uh, well, I guess he will bite. Because he is just absolutely bossing it over here. This guy is in the form of his life. Look at him go. Just not allowing Saranj a touch of the ball at the moment. He's just unplayable in the second half of Stika. And as I mentioned that, he gives the ball away. And now, Saranj basically now has two attacks available to him. He has to score from both of them. He might just get one back with Cruyff over here. Just has to take that low percentage shot. And it no goes way. horribly, horribly wrong. That's a goal kick. And that surely is lights out for Saranj Jain in this match. And lights out for Chennai and FC. And I guess... What Mumbai City FC and FC Goa wanted is what they're going to get a match up against each other in those upper berth, uh, in that upper berth final. Oh, yeah, and uh, you know, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is it. Mumbai City have seemed to have uh, seen this through. Maybe Saranj could be out for a potential surprise, but uh, regardless, I think uh, with 90 minutes already hitting. Uh, this, this match has uh, been uh, finally come to a closure. Maybe with another of uh, Tikka's magic. But it's A-OK. -okay. Just heads out for a corner, clearly showing that uh, Tikka's got that last final attack with Maradona just dribbling oh! past the defenders. And I'm taking Saranj Jen for a joy ride. Welcome to Tikka Train. And wow, what an ecstatic victory for Tikka. A little bit of Apology there, but it's fine. You know, we know the stakes are high, and Mumbai City FC have also successfully secured a top three spot. And there you go, these two brothers, the camaraderie that they've built so long, have made sure that uh, they put the Islanders heading into their upper bracket finals. But for Chennai and FC, boy, oh boy, I mean, we did not think this through. This is something that the critics never really thought. Both the matches, both the encounters, SC Spingol losing their game, Chennai and FC losing their game. One of those uh, potential two teams were our, uh, you know, let's say we sort of anticipated them to win the entire thing. And the next moment you see they're going to be playing in an elimination matchup all along. Yeah, I mean, if you had asked me before today who I expected to be in the upper and lower berth finals, I would have given you the exact opposite prediction of what we've ended up with today. It is, of course, Mumbai City FC who will now be facing off against FC Goa for that direct slot straight into the grand finale. 
and of course the guaranteed uh, second place prize which is a pretty hefty chunk of change and of course uh, now they oh, i think fc goa and mumbai city fc both guaranteed to uh, get that minimum third place prize so minimum of uh, 5 lakh rupees so i think they can uh, potentially start looking at uh, pre-ordering their favorite consoles and games and gaming chairs and all that equipment because uh, yeah they're going to have a little bit of cash to burn now Oh yeah, a lot, a lot. I must say, and that you know uh, the way things have been going on. I mean, um, Mumbai City FC and uh, Karmantik. I'm pretty sure everyone watching out there, his family, his friends, they're going to be proud with uh, the kind of laurels he's brought home, right? Uh, beating the mighty Saran Shen and uh, you know completely outplaying him. It's not something. It's not a very close victory. By any uh, far margins, right? He was just the better player out there, there at the pitch, and well deserved. Well deserved. Yeah, absolutely massive entertainment over uh, there from Tikka, giving us some very very memorable moments. And if you want your own hero ISL memorable moments, you can of course get them in NFT form from Terra Virtua, who is of course our digital collectibles partner. So check it all out right now. just that one last uh, match remains for the evening which has already been decided you know uh, it's all sealed it's uh, just uh, you know for formalities uh, for uh, them right now and uh, you know Carmen Tikka is definitely the man of the hour so difficult on our side you know who is going to be the hero of this match up but regardless you know the journey so far the struggle everything let's take a look at one of those players the star the player that is right now the talk of the town Carmen Tikka there have been many ups and downs excluding tournament and including tournament we were off to a bad start it was like a pattern for us three wins two losses three wins two losses ashwin and i decided like it we would not handle this now salute beauty of a goal from mumbai city fc Brilliant stop from Mumbai City FC. Amazing composure shown there by the Mumbai City FC boys. Now we have been five games undefeated. In the new year, we have not been defeated till now. So I hope this continues now. My teammate Ashwin is like one of the sweetest guy I've ever met in life. Like he always keeps our team's morale up. We communicate a lot in co-op, and we have won most of our co-op games. Our third goal was one of the best goals in the co-op. That I have seen in this tournament for now. Eight minute back yet? Uh, MCFC they've been having a really oh, dominating run. This should be a goal. It has oh, to be. It. It's there. absolutely brilliant. It was a good win for us, and we are confident that we can win all our co-op games now. I have made some new friends from all over the country. There are people from the south, north, from everywhere. So like it's different cultures all come together. Every evening we play cricket. So it's like very fun to see all different cultures in one room hanging out with each other. It's nice. Unfortunately in the first matchup we lost a co-op game. We missed so many chances in the first half then in the second half we couldn't keep our head and we lost the first matchup against Kerala Blasters. Oh and the counter attacks wow. will get easier for Kerala Blasters FC. That's well recovered and what's beautifully worked. That should be a goal and that is the game surely. Second matchup against Kerala Blasters, I decided to go up against Akshat and I conceded two goals in 20 minutes which is not the kind of FIFA I like to play. In the first half itself, I scored two more and equalized it in the first half itself 2-2. That uh, they have the passing game on the players are also coming in deep Roy passing it on to which Ronaldo he's going to take a shot for sure as the Islanders have finally equalized and we dominated them in our co-op game and we won 5-1 or 5-2 something. and again still looking for Eusebio who is going to charge in and score what for as they have made it 5 to 1 oh so i'm going to call it right here this is the best co-op performance we have seen to date in the EISL 
I enjoyed playing against the most is Dugal. Like I've known him for since like three, four years. We've been very close outside FIFA also. So we were like, we'll play in the tournament also, and with full of banter and all. And then a very stressful tournament is also a fun game. Overload on this flank, puts the cross into Ronaldo. Oh, CR7 oh, the oh, oh, it is oh off God. both posts. And I managed to win that game in the late minutes. So it was very fun, and I did. Few celebrations on him purposely as a banter. Actually, I would like to call this my first competitive tournament. <laughs> to be honest, like I've never taken FIFA seriously, always been a casual player. But one of my friends called me up and told me about EISL, and I was like, I'll do something about it. So I played qualifiers and I qualified casually. I don't know how. <laughs> Then I took FIFA seriously, and now I get to realize my potential. I could be one of the best here. After the new year, it's new us basically. We've never lost a game after the new year, and I hope we keep this up and we reach the finals and we win it for Mumbai City FC. Well, uh, you know, what an evening it has been for these two boys just uh, below our screens. A little bit summary of, for all the new viewers out there. It was a league stage throughout the EISL. 110 matches were played, ladies and gentlemen, out of which we did get our final top four. And now these are the playoffs happening, the second match of the evening. What is on the stakes? Of course, it's the chance to get into the upper bracket finals, which already Mumbai City FC have secured for themselves. And they will be heading over Goa on the FC Goa on the 19th. But there you go, the cheers coming out. And I think, uh, yeah, it's party time already. And uh, now the final game of the evening, the co-op game, the game that they have to play for formality, had had Saranj Jain Azim won against uh, Karman Tikka, things could have been different. You know, the atmosphere would have really been intense. But I'm pretty sure what I'm going to be guessing is FC Goa did not reveal a lot of their uh, strats. I'm going to expect Mumbai City FC are not going to reveal those secret cards that are for uh, hiding uh, for uh, their next encounter. Yeah, I think they can just uh, take it easy, enjoy themselves, and yeah, we've seen them grow and become a really, really solid uh, co-op unit to, over uh, over the last uh, couple of months. And uh, we did see that in uh, Tika's interview as well. For uh, Saranch and Naveen, it's not over yet. They still have a chance for redemption. They could still come back and win the entire thing. They just have to go out then. It's going to be a long road back because then they have to beat first SC is Bengal, then they have to beat whoever loses. Uh, between uh, FC Goa and Mumbai City FC and then finally go and play in that grand finale. So they're taking a pretty long detour on the way to that EISL title if they <laughs> want to do it, doing it the hard way. Yeah. And uh, here we go. It is uh, this uh, co-op game with a little bit again of a dead rubber. I was not expecting honestly that both finals would be wrapped up in uh, both set two games, but uh, in the first two games. But uh, that's just the form that uh, these guys have been in. And I have to say from Tikka, what a complete performance that was. I mean, he did not let Saranj into that game. Saranj tried for the entire first half to try and break him down, but defensively, Tikka was on top. And then, once he started playing with that little bit more freedom, he sensed that little bit of weakness in Saranj's game and then really went standing into outstanding individual goals from Tikka over there, showing you just why he's that lethal assassin uh, that we've all come to love in the EISL. And now, uh, given the trend, you would expect the Chennai and FC to go out and win this one because there's not on the line for uh, not much on the line for Mumbai City FC. But uh, well, you never know. Yeah, I think uh, the boys really want to you know, get a victory either way. You know, they want to keep things clean. And uh, Karman Tikka has surely done that really well this time. Uh, Mumbai City FC basing in through that right wing with Eusebio would have to find the perfect pass but uh, Chennai and FC being a little bit more stable but yeah you, I completely agree with you uh, saying the fact that you know um, they have to go with a little bit of a detour they still have a chance to win this entire thing win the ISL take home those 15 lakh rupees represent India in the FGS get that golden ticket hanging over their head the sword hanging over their heads but hold on things could possibly change with Ronaldo Nazario 
went for a shot but uh, well dealt with by the Islanders. Yeah, dealing with that uh, relatively comfortably, I thought Chennai NFC could have uh, been a little bit more intricate, intricate with their build-up. I mean, I think the excitement of the day is uh, causing me to forget words. Uh, it's uh, been that kind of uh, evening for us, but uh, that uh, potentially as uh, potentially as casters is the fact that maybe for the first time we might get to see in the EISL Ankit Gupta playing up against Saranj Jain. It's a fixture we've not had so far and I think it was one of those absolute blockbuster fixtures that we were looking forward to. Potentially, we thought of it as that grand finale but that's definitely not going to happen because only one of those two teams can potentially make it uh, into that grand final uh, match and uh, yeah, it's going to be a very, very long way back for both of those teams if they have plenty of time for them to de- I think plenty of time for them to detox and uh, recover from it. Uh, it's a week for them to practice and really work on their games. Of course, we will be resuming with those upper and lower berth finals and of course the grand finale over uh, the coming weekend over the 19th and 20th and of course don't forget on the 21st we also have the two winning team members who have to now uh, backstab each other and uh, you know all the secrets that they've been sharing with each other all their innermost uh, FIFA secrets that they would tell nobody apart from uh, their their teammate in, in this battle of the EISL suddenly they go up against a player who knows absolutely everything about them Oh yes, and that's uh, the, the golden ticket that I was talking about, the FGS, a chance to represent India at the biggest stage of them all. And uh, yes, like Azim clearly explained for the viewers wondering what that is, so whoever wins this whole thing, uh, whoever, uh, let's say Mumbai City wins it, they won't be going up against each other, but off this chart, a little bit of a off this chart, but oh my god. How, how, how do you do that? Why I could literally see his legs over his head. Oh my goodness, that is a volley and a half. I mean, Johan Cruyff scoring that, but Marco Van Basten would be proud of that. Oof, into that top corner and again, that instinctive finishing, that's what it's all about over here. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was uh, indeed Tikka who put that finish in. It looked like it was because even Ashton was absolutely flabbergasted by it. Now getting in with Maradona and a bit of a risky back pass, but uh, no harm done. Chennai NFC again find themselves uh, trailing this game and it's going to be a long way back. Of course, you don't want to get whitewashed uh, in this uh, tournament. You can see trying, desperately trying those uh, long-range finesse shots. uh, A little bit of a snapshot over there got the timing quite all wrong. And uh, maybe you just need to look across the bench and take a few tips from, uh, from Ashwin on how to get that right because he got it right in the 121st minute of his encounter against Naveen and you can just see the confidence flowing through Mumbai City FC right now and similarly you can see the the lack of uh, the lack of confidence in Chennai in FC because they they're just stunned I don't think they were expecting this at all yeah, I mean, clearly, clearly, because Chennai FC, I think uh, this evening, uh, when we were talking about clear favourites, oh. uh, has not clearly been, uh, you know, anyone's uh, there. Chennai FC and both SEs being, being a little bit unlucky, but what on earth was that? How? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Roberto Carlos experience. Nobody in their wildest dreams would think about taking that, but that is Roberto Carlos. Goodness me, into the top corner. This is exhibition stuff from Mumbai City FC. What an absolute screamer. Oh, God. Oh, God. I, I mean, th- this is this is absolute bullying, right, at this particular moment. You know, what can Chennai NFC do over here to block a shot like that? Getting Roboto Carlos, we haven't really seen a lot out of him. But these new cards really coming in handy. And this is FIFA 22 we're talking about. We have never seen a shot like that being taken from that range and working things out. Chennai NFC looking for some sort of redemption. Dribbling past everybody over there, but Mumbai City FC still very stable, rock solid on their defence and back to their offence. Yeah, and we'll be looking to play that back to Cruyff now. And you know, if things uh, don't uh, change for Chennai and FC, I mean, this could get out of hand and be an absolute uh, thrashing over here. Not something that would be good for their confidence at all, which will already be fragile after those individual results. 
and again you can just see that they are absolutely on top of it oh my goodness me look at the audacity over there to try those moves inside the box in a semi final of the EISL these guys are on a different planet right now and uh, i'm wondering now <laughs> whether fc goa made the wrong choice in saying that they preferred to play against uh, against mumbai city oh yeah <laughs> I I mean completely agree with you. Yeah because at at this point you know Mumbai City or FC are the last teams that you would want to go up against with and even Saranch you know as much as an immortal he is this time he has been fragile completely red and look at look at their face at this point you know nothing nothing that they can do about it i mean what do you do if uh, someone scores from that range as is, is there anything anything chennai fc could have done to stop uh, that sort of a goal going in i mean sometimes you just got to sit back and admire it i think yeah. for chennai and fc their day was done uh, with the first two matches and now just uh, i think you just have to call it a day and say you know what it's it's not our day to day uh, we couldn't do too much about this and uh, again you can see uh, mumbai city fc trying to get forward but chennai and fc also i mean it's a difficult decision do they try to go attacking and try to salvage something from this game try to salvage some pride because uh, of course that means that mumbai city fc can then keep counter attacking them and i mean the way that they're going they'll probably have vandersa vandersa scoring a goal in a little while as well but now chennai and fc getting in with cr7 but again the timing on the shot all off still a second bite to the cherry now with pele wonderful we'll see a sh- uh, finish shot attempted lovely individual skill over there but nope the door shut firmly in the face of chennai nfc and now as i said those counter attacks are going to be so 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 vulnerable to them maradona getting in i'm sure he'll try to go for a cross in over here did attempt that but chennai nfc now it's a very end to end very exhibition feel to the game now and i would expect more goals and the more likely scorers being mumbai city fc yeah i mean uh, this is it right uh, you just get that one chance at them and the uh, chennai fc looking for a little bit of uh, some sort of an opening anything at all they're going to take it but uh, mumbai city fc completely denying them that and you know there's no second leg over here right this is it you know you either win this game or you're battling it out in that elimination match up against uh, whoever team has lost so that has been pretty much sealed and finally Ooh. finally get some uh, respite finally get some success chennai fc managing to score one scrappy goal and there you go the sue celebration coming out of cristiano ronaldo and uh, seems like it's a new card is it yeah i think that is the 94 rated card uh, for cr7 uh, so uh, well it looks like uh, <laughs> they're going oh my goodness they've got a penalty oh. not the penalties that uh, chennai and fc were hoping to be involved in they would have loved for it to be a shootout with something on the line we still might get a shootout of this uh, ends level and now we see maradona I wonder what it's going to be is it going to be uh, a little bit of a gag a panenka a chip shot looks like it's a panenka coming and oh no just straight down the middle and i think uh, chennai fc players reading it usually when the player makes such a fuss about taking so long to aim 9 out of 10 times that ball ends up going straight down the middle uh, and that's exactly what the case was there oh yeah and and you know at this point uh, chennai fc completely read it right they knew that they were going to try and do something you know out of the box and uh, what better way to hit it directly the center but right now chennai fc this could be a really good pass with mbappe oh. goes in for that header but kasias making sure he gets his hand onto it and all it goes out for is a corner yeah no, i'm not quite sure if they've added some new goalkeeper animations in there but hang on it's a shot and i think that's deflected for another corner yes it is but we've seen a few more uh, different save animations today for uh, that than we used to see now with kdb on the ball come chennai fc what can they do nothing is the answer as marquinhos now comes out surely they're not going to try to score with the center half but no he's actually sending marquinhos up at the moment and thinks better of it <clears throat> now with you sebio sprinting down that flank easy cross in over here and that should be well could have been 3-1 but a uh, little bit of mercy being shown over there by mumbai city fc and now chennai will look to get in a beautiful ball in behind this uh, is that saranch or it all oh, lovely lovely bit of work over there sitting that keeper down with the ball roll and the change of direction two players on the line you could do nothing about that and uh, after being two goals down pegged back to two all and potentially extra time and penalties yeah 
I think a little bit of uh, for you know lost focus over there right that that's we can uh, that's what we can conclude from Mumbai City FC being a little fickle on the defense but this is something that they can afford right they've either ways uh, secured their place in the upper bracket finals uh, the outcome of this particular matchup is not going to matter to them they will be facing FC Goa in the upper bracket finals but for Chennai and FC they still have that one last chance inside the ISL where they go, will be going up against the formidable SC Spengal who have completely been looking lackluster tonight. Uh, surely Shayantan did whatever he could do but uh, the man of the hour, the man that they need the most, Ankit Gupta has definitely got a rise from the ashes but for now again Mumbai City FC trying to showcase some of that Tikka magic but uh, was it really successful this time though? But, uh, you know, whatever the outcome over here is uh, not going to worry them a lot. But uh, we never really came into this evening thinking, you know, uh, th uh, you know, such would be the outcome. Mumbai City FC winning their games, SC is all losing it, same goes for Chen and FC. The two clear favourites to potentially win the ISL, they're now battling for survivalism. And now when FC Goa, a lot of people were raising those eyebrows, right? Uh, you know, this is one of the teams that maybe they've lost out their form, lost out their touch. Uh, they're not going to see it through. They managed to defeat the best team in the ISL who had been dominating in the league stages. Uh, Chennai and FC, one of those teams where we do have uh, players like Sir Ranch and Naveen both in contention for the top scorers. And today, uh, Mumbai City FC absolutely made them look like dummies. Yeah, and uh, both uh, Saranj and uh, Ankit, of course, importantly, not adding to their uh, to their goal tally for that uh, for that MVP prize, and uh, it does look like we might see a third goal over here. Good individual skill to get away from the defenders and a pass, and I think one pass too many over there. And the ball does come out to R9. Roberto Carlos bullying his former teammate off the ball over there, and it will be a corner though. So the NFC can keep the pressure up. Five minutes to go. Is this going to go? Keep us come way out. I wouldn't be surprised if we went for a direct kick now. Uh, so if that, uh, that's that's only an Imad special, shall we say? No, we're not uh, not everybody is uh, going to be brave enough uh, or uh, or even uh, skilled enough at times to pull that off because that what we saw yesterday was truly something special from the Northeast United FC player in his last game, uh, which was incidentally uh, up against Chennai FC as well. So now with Maradona coming in, Cruyff. Will he do the turn? And uh, well, trying. Oh, that's brilliantly worked. Still going past one defender, past two, past three. Shot queued up for R9. They're toying with them and oh. completely wide. Gets the timing all wrong over there. Well, Ashwin will be happy that this was the timed finish that went wrong uh, and uh, not the one in that uh, in that first matchup against Naveen. And there we go. 90 minutes played. We, we will go to extra time after this, uh, I do believe. And uh, it's going to be another 30 minutes. Ashwin could have, uh, well, had an early night out, had uh, managed to get out uh, partying at 10.30. But uh, it does look like he's going to have to play 30 more minutes because uh, he fluffed that finish completely. <laughs> I mean, they don't mind, right? They could play FIFA all night long, especially if they keep on playing like how they played in their individual games. But we finally could see some of that Suranj and Naveen magic, right? towards the second half where we did see them recover and score those goals and clearly I'm pretty sure it was Saranj doing the magic over there you know take uh, typical Saranj you know getting that ball flick out there at the right moment just beating the keeper pass and that was something that he was relentlessly trying even in his individual game and uh, you know uh, Tikka was so well prepared for that he made sure did not give Saranj those openings still you know puts me to wondering why did Saranj not take those chances you know someday I would get to or maybe have a conversation with him after this game and ask about him or maybe not today because i'm pretty sure the boys uh, are not going to be happy with how they perform but uh, they still have a chance they still have a chance they've got to prepare for that big game against sc spengal uh, something that we all thought you know those who have been following eis religiously could have been the finals the grand finals sc spengal and chennai fc now they're going to be going up against each other in a match for survival but uh, here we are the extra time beginning and uh, you know very interesting spot for a free game yeah right outside the area and of course it has to be roberto carlos who else would be taking the free kick in this match and going for that corner will we see that knuckle ball or the side spin oh pulled out of the top corner i thought he might have gone for that uh, that iconic roberto carlos outside of the foot shot 
but it falls now to Maldini. You save you with the roulette in the box oh. and a pass to nobody in particular. So maybe the concentration just a little bit low. Of course, no major stakes, so we are going into extra time into a game that is uh, largely inconsequential, but potentially. Uh, we might get to see finally a penalty shootout today. Let's see how it goes. Just a little bit of fun for everybody uh, who's enjoying uh, themselves in the chat and watching these streams. Uh, wherever you uh, wherever you are or whichever channel you're on, you should, of course, uh, hit a like on those streams, subscribe to the channel. There is plenty more EISL action coming over the next week. And oh, look at that! Outstanding stuff over there. Using Johan Cruyff could be a hot favourite this card over here. Look at that. Little ball roll and banged into that top corner. That looked like an Ashwin special to me. Oh, yeah. I mean, you've got to say it, right? Uh, th this is exactly how they've been playing. And, uh, you know, this gives uh, all the players, you know, time to ponder over what could be their set strategies, the right cards to pick up. And uh, Johan Cruyff, we've seen him, uh, you know, come after a long time. Initially, when the EISL began four months ago, Right, it's been one of the longest tournaments that I have personally casted, and it's been such a delight, you know, seeing Cruyff back again. And with that new card, he's been putting, he's been looking so much lethal. So, you know, the, that that is uh, something now players, you know, would be trying different combinations, different set tactics. They've seen what they have uh, to offer. They know what they can do to counter. Uh, but uh, you know, if uh, Tikka and uh, Ashwin uh, pull off masterclasses as such. Uh, then even against FC Goa, they're not going to have any trouble. And look at the, you know, the distaste faces over here. And Naveen is like, Bhai, main kya karu? Like, I did everything that we could do. And especially Naveen, yeah, right? You've got to feel bad for him in his individual matchup. Uh, he, he was the one who was creating those chances. And that little sucker punch towards the end uh, could have gone either ways. But uh, it was, of course, uh, you know, the bubbly assassin Ashwin who uh, did uh, see it through. Yeah, it's true. I mean, uh, it was. It could all have been so different. If he had managed to put that ball away with that mistake from Ashwin, that open goal chance where the defender cleared the ball off the line, maybe a little short fake, ball roll, something could have just created that additional room for him, but uh, it did not work out, of course. Uh, I mean, this, this game would have taken on an entirely different complexion if... Uh, if uh, Naveen had managed to get that win and score that goal against uh, Ashwin, I mean, this could potentially be uh, everything on the line match for uh, Mumbai City FC and Chennai. But as it stands, of course, uh, Mumbai City FC looking to close it out, uh, getting Maradona in there. Will we see a chop back finish? No, I think it's, uh, you said you're offside. There. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, where we're really heading at this particular moment, of course. Uh, Chen and FC. I, honestly, I, honestly speaking, I would want to see an equalizer over here. I, I want to see one penalty shootout, at least. You know, mm -hmm. a match where, you know, just for the heck of it, maybe. But for now, maybe Mumbai City FC looking uh, forward to their fourth goal. But Maldini does not really uh, let that happen. Maldini being another one of those cards that we initially saw a lot of. And then uh, we did have all the team of the player cards coming in. And he was uh, sort of uh, not used anymore. But uh, lately, making his comeback, a lot of uh, cards. And now this is, uh, this could have been, this could have been a good chance. But a uh, little too ahead, out for an offside. Yep, plenty of time now for uh, Mumbai City FC to just uh, see this game out. I mean, they can do whatever they please uh, at this moment. And what they please is to try and get in with R9, turning away from Maldini over there, but turning uh, back into Marquinhos and uh, winning that ball high up the pitch. This could be lights out. Uh, it's not going to be Chennai FC might still go up and score a goal at the other end and give us that uh, penalty shootout that we've been waiting for, but does not look like that's going to be the case. Now with Cruyff getting on, uh, I think maybe the last attack will now fall to Chennai FC. So if there is that one minute of stoppage time which we expect, and there is, uh, the last attack will fall to Chennai FC. The ball played through to R9, still uh, with uh, Chennai FC over here. R9 to R CR7, ball roll and Masai Rule, but the shot cannot get away. And that, I am afraid, will be that or will it? Ball still with Chennai FC. Referee in no mood. Even the referee is enjoying the entertainment over here, clearly. And hold it in. But this time it's out. And there we have it. A whitewash. Who would have seen that coming? Mumbai City FC. Three out of three for them. Gave us some good entertainment in the co-op as well. 
and uh, yep they are through look at the Where camera see goa look into the camera ashwin, ashwin come on where is where is the little celebration that we used to see and uh, <laughs> there we go he's uh, he's very pleased about that and uh, maybe somebody off camera is telling him to look into the camera now who knows uh, but uh, <laughs> still something to complain about for ashwin he's not happy with just winning 3-2 He needs the the environment to be perfect around him as well. <laughs> A little bit of uh, you know some discussions heading out. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure both these players are just curious as to how on earth did they hit that shot with Roberto Carlos over there. I mean, like Saraj is like, bro, you need to teach me this. And uh, I, I likewise, you know. Chennai FC clearly not happy with the outcome and understandably why right it's been 4 months that uh, these players have been living under the bubble staying under the same hotel grinding it out all for this moment and uh, you know losing out it's not uh, losing the game it's not going to be a happy feeling but a happy moment for the boys from uh, Mumbai City FC who have absolutely won everybody's hearts you know both these players and la- let's now officially confirm it uh let's take a look at the scorecard and uh, find out how this entire fixture really panned out as you can see there you go a whitewash is what azim calls this match to be and there you get it right uh, mumbai city fc securing the third spot at the very least for themselves over here in the AISL would be heading on to play against FC Goa in the upper bracket finals now what remains for Chennai FC that's what you're going to be wondering now they're going to be heading off playing up against SC East Bengal in a battle for survival and you know us uh, uh, azim at this point i'm really really confused who on earth is going to be the hero of the match Well, I think you'll probably have to give it to Tikka for. The, I mean, just the fact that we have not seen Saranj dominated in that fashion, and you can see. I mean, he's he scored all the goals. Uh, he got two goals for uh, for Mumbai City uh, FC in his individual match. Scored the three, all three of them in the co-op as well. So richly, richly deserved. Uh, unfortunately for him, only two of those goals count for his MVP tally. But he's up to 44, and the form that he's in, you wouldn't put it past him to uh, breach that 50 barrier. And with Ankit Gupta potentially uh, uh, to get knocked out uh, next week if things don't go his way, uh, he could be one of those surprise packages to enter the end. I mean, uh, this is go- this is it, right? You know, when we're heading into the uh, the this matchup between SC Bengal and uh, Chennai FC. Now this is all about that four lakh up MVP, right? Uh, whoever wins that yeah. entire matchup is uh, going to be the one uh, receiving it, right? Uh, so yeah. likewise, because the other one just gets eliminated from the entire tournament. Now uh, we have seen some. really really baffling goals we have seen some goals that have really you know asked us to question our uh, very existence but uh, only one goal could be called out as the terra virtua super moment of the day and which shall it be all right you know the goal that mattered the most had to be ashwin's winner yeah and uh, over there it just sat up beautifully for him you could see that uh, navin was just worried he was caught in two minds do i close down the shot if he closed down the shot he would have to play that ball uh, to usebio and it would potentially be a goal scoring opportunity over there so ashwin worked that perfectly rode his luck and uh, i mean i think the roberto carlos goal and that croif volley uh, would come in as a close second and third for those terror watch or super moments of the game over there but now let's see what impact this has on the bracket table because we do know who's going to be playing who in our next set of matches fc goa and mumbai city fc of course battling it out the winner of that goes directly into the grand finals and the loser will play the winner of that lower bracket final which will be one of fc east bengal and chennai fc so potential for us to see a rematch of one of the games that we've seen today depending on how results go yeah maybe in the low bracket finale is uh, where we're going to uh, see this uh, you know all these amazing players battle it out but talking about amazing players the man of the evening the star the tikka magic that he's shown us let's just directly head inside the studio as we go face to face with carmen tikka and there you have it you know uh, what an amazing evening has it been for you tikka a lot of uh, people thought that it would be chennai and fc seeing this through but you really took saranj for a ride tell us something about it no like saranj played really well in the first half i was not able to get inside his half only his press was insane but like i tried to figure out my tactics in the second half and i 
do i could what could i do the best so i just went with my instincts what i could do it happened for me so i'm very happy today like yeah yeah no and uh, rightfully you should be happy i think you did defensively very well against saranch in that first half and then uh, you brought out all the party tricks in the second half and i have to ask you about that roberto carlos goal what were you thinking was it just like it's roberto carlos it's left foot let's see what happens <laughs> no like before the game ashwin told let's change our left back to roberto carlos and we were talking in a fun way and i told ashwin that i'll run down the line and i'll shoot an across shot from roberto carlos in a fun way i said that so i got the opportunity in the match i tried and it went in somehow <laughs> but uh, so i like jing- uh, jinxed it for myself <laughs> Still worked out for you, right? Uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, now you've got uh, FC Goa up against uh, next, uh, who really uh, did uh, pull out their hearts uh, tonight and uh, did manage to beat SC Spring. Also, uh, you of course, both of them, uh, both of you guys, wanted to face off against each other in the finals. But now that you're meeting in the upper bracket finals, what are the things going on through your mind? Like obviously, FC Goa played really well today, beating East Bengal. The table toppers is not an easy thing. You have to give credits there. Like we, Ashwin just said, like they, we wanted go and they also wanted Mumbai. So like it's on now. We are in the semis. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's going to be a great grudge match. But what a performance from your ticker today! One of the best individual performances we've seen in the EISL, and you've saved it. Right for the playoffs and the finals. So, congrats on being the hero of the match as well. And we will we'll see you soon. Thank you uh, so much. Week. See you soon, Cheers. guys. Thank you so much. Cheers. Good night. All right, there you go. He's uh, he's got a party up ahead uh, after this, <laughs> right? Uh, considering how he's played uh, tonight was so phenomenal, and everybody in the FIFA community would be watching this. You know, all the big guns. I'm pretty sure Charan Jodh, you've got Crusher, Genesis, uh, everyone, Saksham. They're gonna be happy about how Tikka has played against. Uh, you know, Saranch and beating him was not any easy feat for all the viewers out there. Saranch is one of the best players that South Asia has got to offer, not just India, right? So, yeah, Tikka making his uh, foot over there, making himself uh, well established. I'm pretty sure we're going to, uh, you know, see more of him in the future and more of uh, that Tikka magic. Yeah, absolutely. And creating a lot of magical moments over there. I'm quite sure uh, Terra Virtual will be looking to take that Roberto Carlos goal and make an NFT out of that as well. But uh, you can, of course, head over and check out their existing Hero ISL collection of uh, moments, mascots, uh, all that fun stuff, trading cards. So check it out right now. Well, folks, what an amazing evening uh, has it been, right? Such an amazing day for FIFA. And even in the Real Hero ISL world, we do have some interesting matches also coming up your way. Uh, But uh, yes, that is all we have for today. But before we head out, of course, a huge shout out to all our sponsors as the EISL is powered by Coca-Cola. Our eSports partners, Nordwin Gaming, our associate sponsor, Hero, our platform partners, PlayStation, and our digital collectibles partners, Terra Virtua for making this happen and uh, you know after this we're of course going to be taking a little bit of a longer break we're going to see you directly on the 19th where we're going to have not just one not just two but three matches being played so do not forget to hit that like button do not forget to subscribe to the channel because it's so many interesting matches coming out your way 78 lakh rupees the highest ever prize pool in the realms of FIFA in India is on the line and everyone's just battling it out but uh, for now it is all we had for the night we wish you a happy good night